Okay, in this presentation I'm going to make histograms with ggplot2. So I'm just going to sort of go into the bare basics of it. What I'm going to do is use an inbuilt data set called ntcars. Okay. Okay. So and because histograms are for distributions of univariate variables, essentially what we're doing here is we're looking at one numeric variable only. Okay, so one numeric variable. Let's pick out one numeric variable. Let's go for miles per gallon there. So what I'm going to do here is let's just have a look at the distribution uh, the uh, of miles per gallon. So. It, the minimum is 10.40, the mean is 20.09, the maximum is 33.90. Essentially what we want to do is have a graphical complement to this information. So, um, okay, so what we're going to do here is start off by ggplot. Now ggplot is the name of the command uh, that we use mostly. And the data set we're going to work with is empty cars. Okay. Now the variables. Now we're just working with one numeric variable, and that is miles per gallon. Okay. So that is all we need to get started. That's the fundamentals of our histogram there. Now, a very important thing, and I probably don't mention this enough, is that really, you know, really when we're talking about histograms, really what we want to do here is the proper way of looking at it is that we have a numeric variable called mpg and we really want to understand this variable okay so it's not about really creating i mean for the purpose of this exercise learning ggplot2 it is about learning what histograms how they work but for you know a proper scientific question is uh what, the, what would this histogram tell us that's not what you, how you think about things the, how you think about things is what is the summary, what is the distribution of miles per gallon, uh, and in a graphical sense, convey that information. So really, the star of the show here is MPG, not histograms, okay? So if we were to run that line of code, we just get a blank canvas. Now, I sort of used that analogy there previously, that all that code there does so far is just gives us a blank canvas, okay? So I'm gonna save it as an object called histogram, or hist, okay? And what we can do here, is put in our histogram there we go that's our little histogram it's okay you know um not mad about it but it's okay now you can sort of see here when i go back here to that we can have uh better bin widths okay so bins equals 30 pick better values with bin widths okay so um the range of values is about 20 Okay, or 22 or something like that, okay? So let's just say, for argument's sake, let's go for a bin width of three, okay? Bin width equals three, okay? That's a little bit better. It's a bit, probably three is a bit like too large, but you know, if that might be perfectly good question in a stats 101 drought histogram based on this data set, that's what something you probably should be able to come up with, pen and paper exercise. So what I'm going to do here is, well, let's just dial it down to 2.5. Okay, oops, 2.5. Okay. Now, um, but what is what I want to do here is sort of be able to sort of tell each column uh, apart from each other. So what I'm going to do here is reconfigure the histogram so that we have um so what i'm going to do here is to add in two more arguments to the jom histogram bit and let's have a look at that there so essentially as well as bin width equals 2.5 the fill is white oops and the boundary color is black so there we have it there the fill is white and the boundary color is black okay so um yeah that's it there's a couple of more things we can do so you can change the origin okay or what they now call the boundary okay so it's the sort of starting point i'll do it back here it's it used to be called the origin i think it's now called the boundary as in where the starting point is uh, so it's 10 to 12.5 12.5 to 15 how you can sort of control that okay and notes there 
and there we have it there. So there you have it there, 10 to 12.5. So it does actually sort of specify where the lo the upper and lower bound of each interval is. Okay, you can move it around a bit. Okay, so we can dial it up to. Um, you know, I think you should try and keep it with it uh, inside outside the range of values. Okay. So 10.25, you know, it's lower than the minimum, okay? Just remember that, that it has to, points have to fall inside, okay? Um, so essentially what's happened is that our, our histogram has changed slightly there, okay? So it's hard to detect, but there you go. Uh, what happens is, it's very important thing when you learn about histograms is to, like really, the only work with a really large data set, because if you've got small data sets, you can be very, tactical about essentially you know that they're not they're they're very imperfect particularly with small data sets histograms um now there's loads more you can learn about histograms but i just sort of covered the main points there you can actually add in a, like a density uh, pl uh line above that i'm going to sort of save that for another exercise um, I'm gonna also we can do like things like faceting and so on i might sort of yeah uh, yeah i'm gonna leave it there uh, 